current levels of physical inactivity, activity if you will, are at an all-time low. Now what I've done is I've trolled through the photo archives to show you what this low energy lifestyle has actually done to us. Starting off with a picture taken in Sheffield in 1897, and this is a pretty representative shot of, uh, of a girls' school. Have a quick look at the, uh, the people in this photograph, and they're all looking pretty slim, if not downright thin. Korea, 1951. A bunch of American flyboys getting ready to fly sorties. And uh, you can see again, these are pretty fit and healthy young men. California, 1955. And if anywhere, if you have been to um, an American primary or secondary educational facility in the last few years, you will realize that this is a very unrepresentative of the way that American children look today. They're all fighting fit and at a good body shape and a good weight. And here we are now. Washington, 2001. And the reason why I've used this photograph is that there is a normal-sized person in the background to remind you of the way that things used to be. Wander around Washington these days and you'll see a depressingly large number of people looking depressingly large. And the situation in Britain is not that different. We're following the same curve, a series of curves, as the Americans are. We're possibly five to eight years behind, but we're heading in that direction. And there's a paradox here. We're certainly getting fatter, but at the same time, we are eating less than we have ever done before. This is a rather extreme example, I will admit, of an American subject, in this case, walking his dog. Now, the dog's getting a good cardiovascular workout. Uh, the American isn't. As it says in The Simpsons, his butt probably has its own postal code. Does exercise matter? Yes. The average U.S. adult now spends eight hours a day actually sitting down. Uh, that's as well as the eight hours a day they're spending lying down. Uh, extraordinarily low levels of physical activity, less than 2,000 steps a day. We were not designed to be this sedentary. The Amish, who for a variety of religious reasons, have decided not to use the internal combustion engine. A lot of their work they do by hand, they live on the land, and they correspondingly have far higher levels of physical activity. They've been measured at approximately 16,000 steps a day, and in this group, obesity does not occur in the male population. So that brings us to the second level of the fat paradox. We're getting fatter, but at the same time we're eating less, and our nutrition is poorer. This is a study that was carried out at the Massachusetts General Hospital. It was called the Diabetes Prevention Program. And in the group who were considered to be at risk of developing diabetes, over a period of 10 years, uh, they were taken through a program which ensured that they lost 7% of their weight. They took a very small amount of exercise, 150 minutes exercise a week is only 20 minutes a day, hardly an exhaustive program. And in this group, the risk of progressing to clinical diabetes was reduced by 60%. How effective is that compared to drugs? Well, it's twice as effective as giving people prophylactic INT diabetic drugs. Diabetes is, in general, it is a lifestyle disease. There's not much point in trying to head it off at the pass using drugs. You need to correct the lifestyle that is creating the disease. Metabolic syndrome is a precursor to type 2 diabetes. This is a study that was done by the very wonderful Karen Esposito at the uh, third, I think, University of Naples, published in the Journal of the American Medical Association in 2004. 180 patients were either put on the prudent, which is the current government recommendations, or the Mediterranean diet for two years. In the Mediterranean group, there was weight loss and a number of biochemical changes, all of which were showing that their metabolisms were being normalized. After two years in the placebo group, 12% no longer had features of metabolic syndrome. They'd changed their lifestyle to the point where they had effectively cured themselves. But in the Mediterranean group, slightly over half now had no features whatsoever of the metabolic syndrome. Testimony to the enduring health and the benefits of the Mediterranean diet. Prevention really is better than cure. They're finding out that the best way to switch on the good genes and switch off the bad genes isn't with drugs, it's actually with good nutrition.